Hey everyone, Luke Cook and Matt Goldman here for the last video in our .NET MAUI series and this time we are covering writing our front end in Blazor. Alright, I am excited about this because this puts me back in my safe little web developer bubble that I've lived in for a long time. Uh, show us what you got man, I'm really interested. So that's right, Luke. You, uh, you you understood that correctly. You can build your UI in a .NET MAUI app using Blazor. Yeah. And uh, you've probably seen things before, like Electron, uh, which is a way of wrapping JavaScript apps as a as a desktop or mobile application, or Cordova for uh, an Ionic for, for Angular. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of like that. You build the, the the you build the UI as a spa. The spa in this case is Blazor rather than Angular or or something else. Yep. Um, and yeah, it. it, it spits out an installable binary application. Big difference, though, with the way that you do it with, with MAUI than the way that you do it with something like Electron. When you do it with Electron, it's basically like a little one-tab, one-window web browser yeah. that runs your app in the browser, right? So, so the browser still renders it all, then? The browser re Not only does the browser render it all, but the browser runs all your code. Oh, right, OK. Yeah. So you've got a single thread, single browser, uh, and the code is just JavaScript code, and it's interpreted just like JavaScript code is. Um, with MAUI, it's compiled, so it's .NET managed code, and it runs as .NET managed code. It's only the visual component that's rendered in the web view. All of the code is executed outside the web view. So you're, you still end up having a browser rendering your front a web view then, uh, yeah. still with the Blazor thing, but yeah, yeah all, everything else is pushed out to your actual app. Um, That's right. Executable. Yeah. How much do you know about the different architectures of Blazor? Uh, not a great deal because I haven't touched a huge amount of Blazor. Okay. Not yet, anyway. Yeah. So, so with with Blazor, there's two flavors, right? You get Blazor WebAssembly, and then you get Blazor Server. Okay. So Blazor WebAssembly is effectively a runtime mm -hmm. that runs in your browser, but it's a binary runtime, so you can run. .NET, uh, uh, Blazor uses Mono. It uses the Mono runtime to run Mono in your brow browser, right? With Blazor Server, uh, all of your code, including all of your UI update changes and all that, happens on the server. And it uses a socket-based connection like SignalR to go and get those view render update changes from the server. Right, OK. So with, with Maui Blazor, it works that way, like Blazor Server, except the server is also on your device. Right, right. So it just so latency of zero. Yes. <coughs> nice. Yes. Okay. Yep. We're pretty close. Yeah. 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 So um, yeah. So why don't we have a look at uh, how you can do that? So please. Yeah. Uh, we, Spin up a view in Blazor. Well, we've been we've been looking at this Hello Luke uh, app. I'm just going to close this, and we're going to go and start a new one. Okay. Right. So we're going to go create new project, and uh, this is also going to be Maui. It's going to be so Goodbye Luke. We can call it Goodbye Luke if you like. Yep. So. Previously, when we started a new MAUI app, we chose this, ma new, uh, this .NET MAUI app template. Mm -hmm. We're going to choose the .NET MAUI Blazor app. Right. OK. So I'm going to go next. And you want to call this Goodbye Luke. Goodbye Luke. Yep. Uh, it's also .NET 6. .NET yep. 6. As I said, if <coughs> I had the .NET 7 preview here installed, I could use that. Um, by the way, something we didn't mention earlier is that we got some tags here as well at yeah. the top. So C Sharp, Android, Blazor, iOS, Mac Catalyst, Mac OS, Maui, Tizen, and Windows. So sprinkled amongst that is the different platforms that you can target. Yeah, right. So I'm just going to click Create, and we're going to spin that up. Now, oh, there it is. what you'll see here is uh, a kind of rough hybrid of things you might see in a Blazor app and things you might see in a MAUI app, right? Mm -hmm. So the first thing is you've got your, your MAUI program, right? So that's the entry point and that's the bootstrapper. We've got the, <coughs> the app.xaml and we've got our main page.xaml, but you've also got main.razor. We've also got a WW root and we've got these uh, shared and, and pages uh, folders that you would get in a in a Blazor app, right? Um, so you know, if we look, if we look in there, there's the the counter.razor and fetch.razor that you get in the in the Blazor template. Um, down here in WW root, there's a, an index.html. There is a CSS folder with Bootstrap built in out the box, um, as you get in the Blazor template. Wait, wait, wait. Hang on. So I can write my front end for a native Windows app, Android app, and iOS app, and I can I can use all of my CSS libraries that I have used for years. Yes. And it, and it works. Yes. Really? Okay. Yes. 
so I don't have to mess around with XAML at all. You I don't can, have to touch XAML. I can just use Bootstrap or you know Material or Tailwind or anything like that. Yes. Wow. Uh, yes, it, that's it's, amazing. It's the best of all worlds. Why would I want to use XAML then? Good question. Um, there are reasons. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. Different. Enlighten me. Um, look, I, I, I'm actually a fan of XAML. I, I like it because I'm so familiar with it. I find it um, easier to write a UI in XAML um, than I do in sort of HTML and, and CSS. Oh, okay. Um, I'll be honest. I find it easier to do custom styling with CSS. Um, but you know, just building a simple UI, I find a lot easier with with, with XAML. Uh, and there's other things as well. Like we've spoken um, previously about the Maui graphics library. Mm. Um, so you can create custom drawn controls. Do you remember recently we worked on the SSW Rewards app? I do. Do you remember that circle progress bar? I do. So that was done in Skia Sharp, so not not exclusively XAML. But I would have found that much harder to do in Blazor. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, someone who's he, much better with web technologies might have found it easier. Um, I found it harder. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, we'll come back to Blazor, and this is what we're here to talk about. But there are scenarios where you you want to use XAML and you want to use those graphic drawn controls. Uh, let me show you. Let me show you a little pet project I've been working on. Right. So, I know we're here to talk about Blazor, but I just want to show this up quick, up quickly. <laughs> the Batmobile. The Batmobile. Right, this yeah. is my this is my Maui Batmobile app, right? So I've actually got two Windows apps running here. They're Maui apps, so this would run on any platform. I'm running them on Windows. Yeah. I've got one that's the Batmobile and one that's the Batcave. Okay. Um, and I've also got a little back end here that I'll just start. Um, and this is actually the, the Batcave server. Uh, and this is a gRPC service. <laughs> yeah. So these two, I'll just uh, switch them on. And you can see that this is now transmitting telemetry. Uh, zero RPM, I'll switch this on. And this is receiving uh, telemetry. And I can go and uh, you know pump this throttle, right? <laughs> nice. And this is using gRPC streaming, right? So Zeroed out. Oh, your bat cave is broken. There you go. My bat cave and my Batmobile are broken. Yeah. Crashed. Yeah. Right? So, yeah, so, you know, th th this is the kind of, you know, so why would you not use, um, why would you not use Blazor? You could probably do that in Blazor, um, but I found, found that easier to use the Maui graphics yeah, library. Yeah. yeah okay. So, there are, there are, you know, Blazor, Maui Blazor is an awesome choice. Mm. Um, and, uh, for web devs, absolutely. For right? web devs, and as a, a, a real world scenario, um, which is if you have a full stack solution and you have a Blazor uh, project already, a Blazor UI, uh, it become, and you want to add a mobile app or a desktop app, it becomes very, very simple to just add that Maui Blazor app to your solution. Uh, and you can even abstract away your controls in your UI to a shared Razor class library and share that between your web app and your, your desktop app. Yeah. In fact, I have, um, uh, I don't know if you saw my, um, my Cloudy with a Chance of Mobile talk last year. I did, yeah, I did. Yeah, so do you remember I showed off that Maui chat app in yeah. that? So this is actually the Maui chat app here. Um, so I've got the, the, the back end that runs a, a Signal R Hub in ASP.NET Core. Um, and then I've, you know, I've got a, a, a Maui chat um, Blazor web app. And then I've got the Maui app, but I've also got um, a Maui Blazor version of that app as well. And that's this one here. And you can see that I've also got this, this Razor class library. And this only really has one, you know, one control in it, which is this message list, because it's just for demo purposes. Um, but you know, the, the Blazor web UI uses that, that Razor class library and has it as a dependency, as does uh, you know, the Maui app. Um, uh, the Maui Blazor app. So that, that Maui Blazor app and that Blazor web app are sharing that Razor class library, and they can share the UI logic as well. Yeah, um, that's really nice. You know, there's, there's a client that, that both of us have worked with where they have a, a full stack solution and a web UI in Blazor, uh, and they, they really want a, a, a mobile app. Um, now, when we built that particular client's web app, um, we actually started, before we even built the web app, we built a, a component library, which is a Razor class library that has all those components in it, because they can share it between different web projects. And then when we start building them their mobile app, they can share it with the mobile as well. Right. It's very exciting. I, I have a question straight off the bat, which is, can you mix having a Blazor Maui app and a XAML Maui app so that you know you can do all of your forms and everything, say, as a, as a traditional web dev would, and spin those things up really quickly. But when you get to a page in your app where you want to build the uh, Batmobile's RPM counter, you can start using XAML instead. 
Yeah. Uh, well, in, in theory, you should be able to do that. Um, I haven't ha I've been experimenting with that a little bit. Maybe it's easier if I show you how this works. So we're, we're back now at the, um, the Maui Blazer Goodbye Luke app that yep. we just started. So if you remember from, our, um, from earlier on when we looked at a, a Maui app, we have this main page.xaml. I didn't show you how the app bootstraps that and how it gets to it. Um, but effectively, um, this Maui program uses this call uh, use Maui app extension method. Okay. Uh, and that is past a type of app, right? That is the, the class that backs this app.xaml uh, here. Mm -hmm. uh, and what you can see here is that app has a property called main page and we're assigning it a new main page. So in our app, that was a, a XAML page. In this app here, that main page has a single Blazor web view as the content property. Oh, right. Okay. okay. So uh, we can look at some properties here. So we can see that the host page is the index.html. So it's Blazor wrapped in XAML. Yes. Yeah, right. So, so, this, so from this point onwards, we, we don't have to touch any of the XAML again. We can just live in in Blazor world. Mm -hmm. So in our WW root folder here, in our pages folder here, so on and so forth, right? We can just live in Blazor world. But we do have this, this, this XAML here as well. So in terms of mixing the two, um, I've been experimenting with that a bit. And there are certain things you can do and certain things you can't do, um, as far as I can tell. So we could have an entire Blazor app mm. here that, that is one routable, navigable page in our app. Yep. We could have other pages that are XAML. We could have another page that's another entirely different Blazor app if we wanted. Okay. What I would really love to be able to do, and I haven't been able to do yet, is reuse a Razor uh, Blazor component in a Maui XAML app. Oh, yeah. Just yeah. a tiny little slice of your uh, XAML component, right? Or your XAML yeah. page. So you, you can't do that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that would be great, though. Yeah. yeah. Right. Look, I'm going to go ahead and start this. Okay. Just so you can see. Uh, what the result is. But effectively, again, what we're doing here is we have uh, a Maui app that when it starts, it, it bootstraps this main page. Uh, and this main page is, is just a Blazor web view. And the Blazor web view is running our, our Blazor app. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to see when this starts is basically a Windows app that is just your standard Blazor template, but that's just running there. Oh, yeah. That's the bog standard Blazor Hello yeah, World so app. Yeah. All the stuff that you're familiar with here. Yep. Um, and you can just easily go ahead here and start adding any Blazor component you want. Um, like I said, in the example I showed you and in and what we're going to be recommending for a client very soon, a, a real client of ours, um, is that we'll be able to share Razor components between different you know, Blazor web projects and, and Maui desktop and mobile mm. projects. Mm. Yeah, very good. Um, there's. It's, it's a very good argument to almost default your choice to a Blazor um, implementation of Maui just for the possibility of reusing those, comp those Razor components elsewhere on web apps or what have you later on. Yeah, yeah because of course you, you can, you know, in, in, um, in the last video when we talked about templated controls mm. and we talked about reusing, you know, having a NuGet package or a class library with all your your, your, your company's branded controls and components to reuse between apps. Of course, you can't use those XAML components in a Blazor app. Yes, right. <coughs> Yet. OK. Yeah. But these are still simple Razor pages in code, right? So we still have our code behind. Yeah. And we can still access the preferences the same way that we did we can, in XAML and all of that sort of goodness. We can. We can access all of the same platform UIs. Yep. So if I were to go into, say, this, uh, at the moment we've got this counter page. Uh, and this is your standard Razor page with your code in here as well. Um, but what I can do is I can access that preferences namespace, right? So if I were to create a field here, um, just like we did in the, in the hello Luke, mm -hmm. uh, and I call it username, uh, I can then, you know, in my constructor here, um, uh, I wouldn't do it in the constructor. I'd probably do it in the on appearing method, wouldn't I? Uh, which... Remind me how you get to that loop. On initialized? On initialized, that's the one. Uh, I think I've got to do protected override uh, on after appear, isn't it? Or on after render. Yeah. So let's do it in this one, right? So I'm going to call the base. And here I can, I can do username equals preferences.get name of username. Uh, and give it a default value of string.empty. 
Uh, and this is, of course, if I were to uh, F12 into this preferences here, this API, you can see it's part of the Maui.storage namespace. So this yeah. is, the, I have access to all those Maui APIs directly in my Razor classes uh, in, my, in, in, my, in my Maui Blazor app there. Right. OK, so a question. Uh, when we were doing the XAML version, you went and set the width of a control yep. to 200. And I did. it was 200 DIUs. Yes. So when you are working with web apps, yep. DIUs don't generally exist. That's correct. So how does one compute their dimensions when writing a native app using CSS? Well, you would use points. Okay, so you know in web technologies, so either in your browser or in CSS, you have points. Mm -hmm. So if I were to set something to a width of 200 points, that should give me the same width as 200 DIUs in, in MAUI. So, right. so like I said, they have different names across and different implementations, but they kind of all agree it's, a, it's an unofficial standard that a point is roughly 1 60th of an inch. Okay. So whether that's DIUs in, in MAUI, whether it's device-independent pixels, uh, you know, on iOS, whether it's points in a browser, they all adhere to that approximate 1 60th of an inch uh, standard. And has MAUI done a lot of uh, con convention marriage, I guess, between, say, what a header one tag looks like in a Blazor page and those enums for text size that you were showing me in XAML? Yeah. Uh, they, they f well, they do follow some kind of conventions, but it's not, really, uh, it's not really an agreed standard. So even different browsers will render an H1 tag, you know, a different size mm. across different browsers. So uh, again, that's why you um, have those semantic properties. So if you remember when we were looking at the XAML, we, we had, uh, uh, you know, semantic property, we could set it to header one, right? And then that means that your assistive technology, like your screen reader, knows that that is a header one and that is a top level header, right? Same thing as you would do in a web in, you know, in a web Blazor app or an Angular app. Right, okay. But the way, in terms of visually, the way they're represented, they're not, they're not necessarily consistent. Fantastic. That gets me really excited for the time where I get tapped on the shoulder to write a Maui app. The fact that I'm able to dive in there and use the entire tech stack that I've been using for many years. Yeah. Um, and then just build that straight out to Android on iOS or a native desktop application. It's yeah. fantastic. Super, super easy. Build the UI using the, the standard technologies you use. Though You mentioned Tailwind. Like I'm a huge Tailwind fan. Mm. As long as someone else has designed the UI for me, <laughs> uh, Tailwind is great. Helps me implement someone else's UI. Yeah. If I have to come up with my own design, give me Bootstrap, Bootstrap. or Material because you know, it, it's not going to look as, as terrible then. Because designers, we are not. That's right. right. That's right. Yeah. 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 You know what things end up looking like when I design them? Have I ever shown you my discount pal side project? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'll show you this Blazor app, which we could, uh, which we could, you know what, we could do this as a uh, another project, which we won't do today, but we could port this to a, a being a Maui app. This is, pal. this is what things look like when I design them. <laughs> Gradients in the year, what are we, year 2005 right now? Something like yeah, that. Yeah, right. Okay. But you know, this is, this is a Blazor app, and, and this is a, um, a bootstrap uh, theme. Yep. I could, I could rebuild this in seconds, not in seconds, but in minutes in Maui. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Fantastic. Well, I really hope that there are other .NET devs out there like myself who have never written uh, any sort of mobile application or native mobile application and now have, I guess, like some familiar tools uh, and toys available to them so that if your boss or your product owner taps you on the shoulder and says, OK, we now want to build a native mobile app so we can get in the store and get that store presence, uh, you're able to not immediately break out into a cold sweat like you might have. And, uh, and you can now do all of that using the tech stack that you've been familiar with. Thank you very much for walking me through Maui today. It has been an absolute pleasure, and, and I honestly do look forward to actually starting to write some Maui myself. It's pretty exciting. Uh, stick around for what may be a sort of unscripted uh, Q&A session that we will have where, where you know, some, some questions that we weren't able to answer during these videos might be raised. Uh, it'll be worth a shot. But if not, thank you very much for joining Matt Goldman and myself, Luke Cook, at SSWTV. Make sure to click the like and subscribe button, and we will see you next time. Thank you.